Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking an early look at an upcoming x86 powered board known as the N6000. This was recently sent over to me from a company out of China and they do have some listings on AliExpress, but not this specific board and that's because they should be releasing this in the next couple months. Now the price point that they've given me so far is 99 US dollars for a bare bones unit with a power supply and for that price I do think that something like this might be worth it. This is capable of running Linux or Windows. In this video, we're going to be testing out Windows 10 on it, but we've actually kind of seen these same things in the past. And basically what we have here is a main board from a mini PC that they're going to kind of market as a single board computer. And to tell you the truth, if they can keep the price down at $99, I wouldn't mind at all buying something like this because it does perform quite well at that price point. It does make for a really nice little x86 board. But before we go any further with this one, I did want to announce the winner of the Simply Nook Dragon Canyon Nook giveaway. Now if you missed this one, don't worry, more will be coming up, but this was a pretty awesome one. They partnered up with Intel to give away a fully loaded Intel Nut 12 Extreme, otherwise known as Dragon Canyon, and it's powered by an Alder Lake i9-12900 and paired up with an RTX 3080 Ti. Also had 32GB of RAM and came with a cherry mouse and keyboard combo. Really awesome little setup and I did a lot of testing, emulation, Linux, and Windows. It'll basically run anything you throw at it at 4K. But the winner for this one has been chosen by Simply Nook and it looks like Soren F is going to be taking home a really awesome super small form factor 4K gaming machine. You got a really awesome PC and congratulations on this, but like I mentioned, this isn't the last giveaway this year, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. Now real quick, I want to give you a size comparison between the Raspberry Pi 4 and this unit here. As you can see, it is coming in much larger, but it does have a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi 4, given that this is powered by an Intel Pentium Silver N6000. We've got 4 cores up to 3.3 GHz. It supports dual channel SODIMM DDR4 RAM. It also supports an NVMe SSD, and it's also got an M.2 key E slot for a Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth module. And the whole thing runs on 12 volts. These will be shipping with a 36 watt 12 volt adapter. So theoretically, it'd be easy enough to run this on battery power. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how this little thing performs. And another cool thing it's got going for it is it's totally passively cool. You can plug in a fan. There is a little three pin connector. So if you did need to add some extra cooling to it, you could, but these will be coming bare bones. So you have to add your own storage and RAM. And if you want Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you'll also have to provide a module for that. But the way I've got this set up for the testing in this video is with 32 gigabytes of RAM, and I would have went with 16, but I'm using that in another system right now, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. When it comes to the specs for the CPU, we've got the Intel Pentium Silver N6000. Four cores, four threads, base clock of 1.1 gigahertz, and a burst up to 3.3. For the GPU, we've got Intel UHD graphics with 32 execution units. These aren't XE graphics, but they're actually getting really close with the N6000. It'll support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2,933 megahertz. We've got one USB-C port, three USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, full-size HDMI 2.1, one M.2 slot that will support an NVMe SSD, another M.2 slot that supports a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Like I mentioned, this runs on 12 volts and you can install Windows or Linux, but for this one, I've got Windows 10 already installed on this SSD and I really do want to jump right into some testing. All right, so here it is. I've installed Windows 10 Pro and uh, as you saw, we did add quite a bit of RAM here and that's just because that's what I had laying around. This will only run at a maximum of 2,933 megahertz, even though this is 3,200 megahertz RAM. I was really hoping we could get it up a bit because it would help out with the GPU performance. Overall, been a pretty snappy little experience. We've got that Intel Silver N6000, four cores, no extra threads. All four cores can hit a max clock of 3.1 gigahertz, but we can only boost on one to 3.3. And of course, we've got the built-in Intel UHD graphics with 32 execution units. First thing I wanted to do was find out what kind of TDP this CPU is set at. So uh, I've got CPU-Z here, I've also got core temp, we've got our power right here. If I run a stress test, you'll see that it'll jump up to 15 watts, we're at 14.5 and that's basically maxed out for the N6000. Now when you start stressing out the GPU and the CPU at the same time, the whole unit can pull a little more wattage up to around 22 watts altogether, but that's totally maxed out on this board. 
web browsing and everything like that is really smooth. I mean, I wouldn't pick this up for, you know, 4K video editing or photo editing. But as an everyday desktop for checking email, document editing, and things like that, it should work out just fine. Now, uh, I do like testing out 4K video playback. And what I'm going to do here is actually swap my display over to 4K. No scaling whatsoever. I know it's going to be a bit hard to see. But we'll get right into some 4K streaming from YouTube just to see how it performs. So yeah, as you can see, we've got no scaling going on. Let me get this video up and going. Let me start this off fresh. We're going to go to 4K, Stats for Nerds. And real quick, I'm actually going to reset that frame counter or that drop counter up there in the top left hand corner. Go back to 4K. Give it a second to buffer a little bit. And yeah, in the past, I've actually had the chance to test one other system with an N6000 Intel CPU, and they do handle 4K quite well. So the next thing I did with this board was run a couple benchmarks. And first up, we've got Geekbench 5, single core, 715, multi, 2248. Definitely on the lower side of things, but we are working with a lower end chip. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Here we have Wildlife, this is a Vulcan benchmark. Total score, 3094. And the final one I ran was Night Raid. Got a 4470. So it's not going to win any benchmarking awards, but I still want to see how this thing handles gaming and emulation. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So yeah, I'm definitely testing out some older games here. This little chip isn't going to run God of War or Elden Ring, but there's still a lot of older titles that this can run at full speed. Here we have Dirt 3 1080p with a low medium mix, and we can get an average of around 70 FPS out of it. Next up, we've got the original Skyram, and for this one here, I did have to drop it down to 900p. We're at low settings, but it does run it quite well. If you want to run this at 1080p, you can expect an average of around 54 FPS. Of course, we had to test out Minecraft, and this is the Microsoft Store version. We're at 12 chunks, fancy graphics is on, and the resolution is set to 1080p. I'm not exactly sure how it works with Minecraft, but it does run it at 60, as you can see. And the final PC game I wanted to test here was The Art of Rally. This is the newest one on the list, and it's super fun, but it's not a super hard to run game. We're at 900p with this, medium settings, and we get an average of 73 FPS. So yeah, I mean, it's not a AAA gaming machine, and I didn't expect it to be going into it, but there are some really fun titles that can be played at full speed on this device. Now, it's time to see how this little thing handles emulation. And the first one on the list here is Dreamcast using ReDream, we're at 1080p, and as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, you're not going to have any trouble running it. And to tell you the truth, we could probably take this resolution up a little more, but 1080p still looks really great with these games. PSP is another one that performs really well on the N6000, this is the standalone version of PPSSPP, 3x resolution, DirectX 11 back in, and it's running Ghost of Sparta at 60 FPS. So if we're able to take this harder to emulate game up to 3x resolution, the easier to emulate stuff can go much higher. I'd say 5 to 6x with the easier to emulate games. When it comes to PlayStation systems on this little chip here, it kind of stops right here at PS2. We could turn on a lot of hacks in the background and get better performance, but unfortunately we just really don't have that CPU power to push this emulator at full speed. Of course there are easier to emulate games that might work better than the one you're seeing on screen now, but I wouldn't pick this up for PS2 emulation.
But when it comes to GameCube and Wii, the Dolphin emulator does work really well with the N6000. I've actually had really good luck in the past on the same chip with this emulator. And if you take a look at Afterburner, up in the top left hand corner, we're only pulling around 10 to 11 watts out of this whole system. We're at the native resolution, DirectX 11, and this is a harder one to emulate. This is kind of my go-to test, Auto Modalista, but we're at full speed. Overall, it's not a bad performing board. I personally really do like the N6000. I wish we could take that wattage up a little more just to keep those clocks up on the GPU and CPU, but we're kind of stuck here at 15 watts. But that's kind of by design, because these are supposed to be low power consumption boards. And from the wall at idle, this only pulls 4 watts. I use a kilowatt meter to test all of this. While gaming, it does jump up to 21, but you know, in emulation, you're going to be pulling around 14 to 15 from the wall. And the max that I could get this to do from the wall while maxing out all four cores and the UHD Intel graphics was 23 watts in total. So yeah, there's a lot of use case scenarios you could put this little board through, and if they can keep that price at $99 like they suggested for a bare bones unit with the power supply, I think a lot of people would jump all over it. Of course, you'd still have to add your own RAM and storage, but you could probably get out with this little thing at around $150, fully set up, ready to go, either with Linux or Windows installed on it, and it does perform better than the Raspberry Pi 4 and a lot of other single board computers on the market right now. So if this is something that would interest you, let me know in the comments below. Like I mentioned, they were thinking about doing an Indiegogo or maybe a Kickstarter, and really, when it comes down to it, they've already got these boards ready, so the release wouldn't be far off at all. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I will update everybody in the community tab as soon as I hear some more information, if they're going to go ahead and go through with this or just start selling them outright. And once everything's ready to go, I will leave links in this video's description. I'm going to put a placeholder there now because, like I mentioned, they're kind of on the fence with what to do with these boards. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.